coded history, double identities, a Mary the Virgin and Mary Magdalene, the same woman. Translating symbolic art is a study of classical and biblical mythology, local folklore, archaeology, and being human. This is a request from an Australian researcher seeking examples of Mary Magdalene coded as Mary the Virgin in Old Master's artworks. I found Mary Magdalene dressed as a Virgin Mary in a few artists' works and since found a few more. For me it is interesting to revisit my old research with my new research and unveil more layers and discover what I see now. People have run into dead ends trying to identify the real people of the Bible for centuries. That's because they weren't looking through the perspective of being a royal nor the cultural evidence with the eyes of an art historian. The Bible stories are all about royals. There is an ancient language of symbols and colors used since before there were royals. It's still used in the 21st century for royals to identify each other. And the history is not in history books. The Annunciation by Leonardo da Vinci An oil painting he created between 1472 and 1475 and currently housed in the Uffizi Gallery of Florence, Italy. Archangel Gabriel announces to the Virgin Mary that she is pregnant and will birth a king of kings. The name Gabriel comes from Jibril an Egyptian Arabic variant of Gabriel and the traditional Arabic Jibril. Was Angel Gabriel a Persian or Egyptian prince? This painting makes me ponder double identities and split personalities. To identify the real people of the Bible, we must look at people's culture of their day. Real art history is incomplete without why an artwork gets created or destroyed or why it might get recycled. Tracing that, we find a large amount of history not in history books or not interpreted or interconnected as the era the artwork depicts. Art history is the same as archaeology cross-referencing design and what we know of a culture in the time they created and used the design. It is all the same method. Archaeology regularly mythbusts modern versions of history books. The same as modern medicine regularly mythbusts medieval cures. The study of heraldry is also art history. Heraldry is a third-party record of history. Heraldry keeps its own history books. In genealogies, diaries and real estate records. And in heraldry's own coded language. Heraldry are symbols that identify royals. They include objects, architecture, plants, animals, shapes, and colors. For example, the colors of the monarchs of France are yellow and blue. As we can see in Leonardo da Vinci's painting, Mary the Virgin is wearing yellow and blue. Heraldry indicates that the Virgin Mary is an ancestor of the monarchs of France. And, Ancient French folklore speaks of the French monarchy being related to the Holy Family. Most famously, the 12th century Holy Grail romances of Chrétien de Troyes. Le Chevalier de la Charette is the story of Sir Lancelot du Lac and Forbidden Desire. Le Chevalier is a French royal title and an equivalent of an English Sir Knight. Sir Lancelot falls in love with King Arthur's wife, Guinevere Pendragon. 
After much courtly love and a couple of kidnappings, the affair is consummated. Some theorists theorize that Gretchen Detroit's work is about the Holy Grail bloodline. Other theorists theorize that Mary Magdalene founded the Holy Grail bloodline. Mary Magdalene's most well-known symbols are her jar and the colors green and red. Archangel Gabriel is wearing green and red. In heraldry tradition, this means that Mary Magdalene and Angel Gabriel are related. Around Angel Gabriel's right arm is a ribbon tied with a half bow and tendrils, a Greek royal symbol. The same kind of half bow is sometimes interpreted as a marriage knot. Da Vinci depicts Mary the Virgin wearing pink, which is a paler shade of red. Mary the Virgin's yellow, mixed with her blue, creates green. Does this mean that Angel Gabriel and the Virgin Mary are second cousins? The legend of Mary Magdalene's red is when she performs a magic trick in Rome. According to the legend, Mary Magdalene was an educated and wealthy woman. Important and well-connected enough to get an audience with Emperor Tiberius. After Christ's resurrection, Mary Magdalene goes to Rome. In the court of Emperor Tiberius, she denounces Pilate for how he conducted himself at Christ's trial. Mary Magdalene explains to Tiberius about Christ and his resurrection from the dead. She holds up an egg to the royal court and proclaims, Christ is risen. Emperor Tiberius lets Mary Magdalene know his bemusement, saying to Mary Magdalene, there's as much chance of a man returning to life from the dead as the egg in your hand turning red. On cue, the egg in Mary Magdalene's hand turns red in that very moment. Some centuries after that, Mary Magdalene became associated with prostitutes. Since then, the color red is associated with women of loose morals. If we look at the hem of Mary the Virgin's gown, we see it is dirty and red. If we look into the room of the house behind the Virgin Mary, we see a bed draped with a red cover. In Leonardo da Vinci's painting, Mary the Virgin sits at a desk reading a Bible with a red cover. A translucent veil is draped around the Bible and the desk. 2,000 years ago, Jewish women were not educated and not allowed to read or write. It is doubtful that even Mary the Virgin was able to read. It is doubtful that any women received an education in Hebrew communities during that era. There are no known texts in existence attributed to Jesus' mother, Mary the Virgin. None. Also, nobody wrote about nobodies or prostitutes back then. Paper was far too expensive for most people until years after the printing of the King James Bible. They only wrote about royals and gods and goddesses, with the odd royal love poem in between. The literacy rate in Israel at the time of Jesus is estimated to less than 15%. According to ancient Hebrew tradition, we can assume the Hebrew literate of this time were males. This leaves Jewish women out of the picture and off the record altogether. Claims of Mary the Virgin being a well-educated woman do not sync with the Hebrew cultural norms of that era. Yet there is a tradition that Mary Magdalene was a well-educated woman. There is also an apocryphal gospel authored by Mary Magdalene herself. The Gospel of Mary is a non-canonical text. Discovered in 1896 in a 5th century papyrus codex, hand copied from an older codex. In the Gospel of Mary, 
Peter is opposed to Mary Magdalene preaching because she is a woman. Peter plays the same role in the Pistis Sophia, where Mary is identified as Mary Magdalene. The Gospel of Mary is written in Sahidic Coptic, which is an Egyptian language. Two other fragments of the Gospel of Mary were discovered after that, but both were written in Greek. The main part of Mary's desk is decorated with chrysanthemum leaves and a scalloped seashell. Chrysanthemums and their leaves are symbols of Greek monarchies. The decorations on the desk say that Mary Magdalene and Mary the Virgin are of royal Greek heritage. In classical art, we see them both depicted as blonde and Caucasian. Shells are also symbols of Mary Magdalene, relating her syncretity with the sea and the Roman goddess Venus. Venus is also syncretistic with the Egyptian goddess Isis. The trees in the background do not fit with the modern Christian story. Spruce and columnar juniper come from ancient Europe, not the Middle East. This can be explained away as artist's interpretation, but in symbolic art, every detail has a meaning. When you see one or two symbols in an artwork, it's an invitation to look for more. It is up to us to research what that meaning is and its connection to the painting's context. Spruce is a sacred tree of the Greek goddess Artemis, goddess of the moon, hunting, nature, and protector of women. The goddess Artemis is syncretistic with the goddesses Venus and Isis. Other species of juniper are dedicated to the goddess Artemis Asherah, or Astart, from Syria. In Leonardo's Annunciation's coded context, they are all syncretistic with Mary Magdalene. The lily that Gabriel is holding is another royal story. Many plants in Old Master Bible paintings have gods and goddesses attached to them. Archangel Gabriel is handing the Virgin Mary an Isis lily at the Annunciation. The Virgin Mary and Isis both gave birth as virgins. For the sake of not having an argument, this is where I ask you, the viewer, reader, and listener, to fantasize. Gods, goddesses, angels, and saints were not winged beings of superpowers. Nor did they perform biblical miracles or mystical world domination. The real story is Imperial Royals did heroic stuff at some time back in history. Their families deified them and built memorial chapels for them. The fans added writer's privilege and generations later believed it. And that's pretty much how all religions are born. Isis' story is actually carved in stone in Egyptian hieroglyphs. Isis saved her people from cannibalism during a great catastrophe and famine. She brought grain from the royal granaries and helped the survivors grow food. Isis is called Venus, Astarte, and other names in other cultures. In Turkish folklore, Isis was a daughter of Noah from the biblical flood. The Bible, while not direct history, does contain some history in allegory. The fingers of Mary the Virgin's hand rest on the Bible with the red cover. Her thumb lifting the translucent pages and pointing downwards. Connecting what's in the Bible with the red cover with what's under it. Underneath the Bible with the red cover is a half-veiled pedestal. A veil in symbolic art denotes that privileged information is hidden under the veil. The information lies in secret, waiting for unveiling by the educated viewer. 
The educated viewer is on a quest to find such veils. We can see under the veil that the pedestal is in the shape of an ornate jar. The jar is in all four Gospels of the New Testament. In Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, a woman anoints Jesus with oil from an alabaster jar. Mary Magdalene anoints Jesus with oil in an emotionally charged scene. The infamous alabaster jar of spikenard was an expensive luxury item of its day. Older folklore says that Mary Magdalene indeed was an affluent and important woman. Not the impoverished prostitute that modern Christian folklore depicts. In the book of John, Judas Iscariot complains of the waste of so much money on the oil, and understandably so. Spikenard oil was too expensive for anybody but the very wealthy. Christian folklore recounts that the jar of oil was a gift to Mary the Virgin, given to her by a visiting king at the birth of Jesus Christ. At that time, spikenard oil was used only by high-ranking royals, and only for marriages, coronations and burials. In the Bible, Mary Magdalene bathes Jesus' feet and head, then anoints his feet and head with the expensive oil. Mary Magdalene is anointing Jesus' feet in an ancient royal marriage rite. But some say it was more than just a marriage ritual. The Catholic black nobility are a not-so-secret secret society as conspiracy theorists theorize. The black nobility are an ancient line of Catholic royals and generations upon generations of historians. One of their family was one of my research mentors. In one of our discussions, she said that Mary Magdalene anointed Jesus' head in a coronation ceremony of a king, which only a priestess and imperial royal can do. She benedicted him. This is to say that Mary Magdalene was an empress and a high priestess. She consecrated Jesus as co-emperor. There are yet more symbols of high royalty in Leonardo's Annunciation. The Virgin Mary's eyes look towards Angel Gabriel. As we follow the path of her eyes, we see a scene in the background. A single tower on a hill and a harbour with towers on the shoreline. The tower on the hill reminds me of visiting Glassbury Tor in England. Legends abound there of how Joseph of Arimathea brought the Holy Grail to the region. Another legend says he brought the royal son of Jesus and Mary Magdalene. There are also royal stories of the towers on the shore. Mary Magdalene in modern tradition comes from a town called Magdala on the Sea of Galilee. Magdala in Aramaic means tower which is another classical symbol for Mary Magdalene. Magdalene is also an ancient feminine form of great, an imperial royal or priestly title. Towers and pillars are also symbols of royalty. They are where the name Pillars of Society comes from. In every myth is a grain of truth, a favorite saying of my father. In modern myths, Mary Magdalene was a poor, nobody Jewish prostitute. A devoted disciple of Jesus, but no association with the Jesus family. In Leonardo da Vinci's and other artists' art, it says otherwise, in the use of symbols and colors. When we look closer, we find that the Virgin Mary's hair is draped in a diaphanous veil. Below that is one of the most subtle and probably most telling clues. The Virgin Mary's blue cloak. 
held is draped unusually over her knees and the arm of her chair. It forms three peaks and two dips, the shape of a big blue double M. Double M for Mary Magdalene. Is this all a coincidence? Sunday, July 4th, 2021.